Are all the Everest plans sort of still up in the air a bit? Well, I don't think we're that much the wiser. Where's your gut leading at the moment between Elise and Osborne Bulls? So there's a lot of talk around him. I guess it's the elephant in the room. I'm not sure we need to make any decisions, but. Okay. We've actually never been lucky enough to see her at full fitness and in full flight at a, in, in a grand final occasion over a, over a sprint distance. She's got a turn of foot that not many horses possess. I personally am surprised she has not got a slot. The biggest, the biggest watch for us on this weekend has to be Bivouac, and, uh, and, and he's running for a lot more than the million dollar prize money in the Golden Rose this weekend. Bivouac comes back, Bivouac fights on, and Bivouac wins the Golden Rose. We think he's the best three-year-old colt in the country. I'd rather give him his chance again at six than I would in a while. Yeah, I think I think I think the next six days are are crucial for us. What's the party line? Well, don't worry. We'll talk about that when it comes to the Everest. Not not you know, just no need. The party line. Every, the party line. Cha the party line changes if we're talking about having two runs. If she and Osborne Bulls were to make the field. It would be very interesting to see who came out on top. I still, I still think that he's going to be right up there with, possibly with it, without, right up there as our best chance in the year. There was a lot of adrenaline, there was a lot of excitement, there was, but they, they then they talked to people and they said they've never been to a race meeting with so much atmosphere. They said it was just different. It was different. It was, you know, it was buzzing, it was exciting, it was, you know, you couldn't move in, in Randwick. It was the biggest crowd I've seen, you know, in my whole career at being at racing. There's a sense of calmness in the room. Butterflies are running through your stomach and you just can't wait to get out there and compete. I remember the pressure on the day was um, unbelievable. It was. Uh, it was quite intense. You walk out of the room and, and you see the, the crowd around the, the, uh, the theory of the horse out the back. It's, it's something I've never seen before. With the Everest, because it attracts such good horses right across the board, there's a very eerie feeling going to the race and everyone's really wondering how is the event going to unfold. Here we go for the Everest, the lights on. Well, a bigger roar than last year. It's a moist crowd here at Ramick and the gates open for the Everest. That roar is rare, um, you, know, you, you hear it in the Melbourne Cup, you hear it when Winx was running, but you hear it in the Everest. So you know people are engaged, people are excited, there's atmosphere, there's expectation, um, and that's what it's all about. In a major milestone for Sydney Racing, Racing New South Wales and the ATC have announced an extraordinary $10 million race. They're off in the Pegasus World Cup! Everyone loves a good idea. And at Randwick on October 14th, the Harbour City will stage its version of this mind-boggling concept. The lure is stake money of 10 million. Yes, far more than for the Melbourne Cup. 5.8 million to the winner. 12 owners have bought slots for $1.8 million for the first three years of the Everest. Look, we saw the Pegasus series in America and I thought it was a very good idea you know, about the slots. And while I was attracted to it, I knew it would cause controversy, discussion and a lot of publicity because in picking a horse, it's always going to be controversial, it's always going to be of interest. The day has arrived, the stage is set, the $10 million Everest Stakes is upon us. It's an innovative idea that was brought to us by Peter Volandes of Racing New South Wales and Jason. It's a spectacular day. The Everest as a concept has just made an extraordinary impact on not only Sydney racing but Australian racing. It's, it's unique in a lot of respects and it's designed for sprinters which to be fair is the strength of Australian racing. And, 
in just two years. We've only had two runnings of the race so far. It's certainly made an extraordinary impact and not just nationally, it's gone global. What the Everest has done for racing in, in, in Sydney, I've never seen in my time in racing. Uh, the, the cut through that this race has is quite extraordinary, uh, particularly to a younger generation. Uh, it's attracting a new uh, genre of race goer, uh, which I think is very exciting for the industry generally. I like the way it's gotten the young crowd back involved. Sydney really needed a new kick and, a, and um, an, an energy boost and that's what the Everest has been able to do. So it's created a huge amount of momentum. It's a fast and furious race and um, it's a fast and furious crowd as well. The talk's over. Darren Flindell is set to call. Here we go for the Everest, the lights on. To the big roar of the crowd, they're off and racing. She will rain was a bit tardy out. We'll settle the second last and Bredzel jump fast. I remember thinking at the time that the, the race was panning out quite well for us. So the horses were where I wanted them to be. Vega Magic's got cover around the turn. Clearly innocent making hard work of it. English Chautauqua still back last up the rise. Hootson and Redzell. Redzell was in his customary position up front and you can see when he was nursed up the rise, you just knew the horse was going to give a good kick and it would take a pretty good one to get him. Bray smashes, ducking and weaving. Chautauqua six off them, but Redzell's burst clear at the 100 metres. Vega Magic, Bray smash running on, then Chula, but Redzell, he's home in the Everest. Redzell leads all the way. Redzell has won the Tab Everest and $5.8 million. Can you believe it? I mean, this race was never even dreamt of, only a matter of months ago. And it's amazing to think that, uh, you know, it's grown to such a level that it has now. It's a world-class event. This is like nothing I've ever seen in a race course before, ever in my life. Absolutely unbelievable. We got the phone call to do the ring around. Oh, would you like to take the slot? I'm like, please, in. We actually had one owner that said, oh, no, let's wait till next year. I wanted to buy him out. <laughs> Where else do you see that? Where else do you see a billionaire do a deal with a bricklayer. You know, uh, you don't see it. You know it's on again next year. We'll be back, I tell you. <laughs> we'll be back. They might have to shut the gates here at Royal Randwick because the publicity has been all around Sydney and in fact all around the world. Mixing a day out at the races with the night at the opera hasn't been popular in Australia. After days of debate, the promotion of a Sydney horse race on the Opera House went ahead last night. This has caused quite a storm in Sydney and around the country. I just don't understand why we tie ourselves up in knots about these things. And I'll tell you what, if you didn't know about the Everest last week, this week or any time the last few weeks, you sure do now. We have finally made it. We have a feel that has changed at the very last minute, but we are here. Next to you is a man who last year wasn't allowed to ride in the Everest. This year thought he might be riding Chautauqua. That didn't happen. This morning he thought he was riding Home of the Brave. That's out of the question. It has been a rider, and the team at the agency called him during the weekend and told me Home of the Brave was scratched and um, he waited about 30 or 40 seconds before he told me I had another ride in the race. So it was, it was a worrying time. Well, were we anxious about getting a slot? Yes, we were. We had a couple of nice sprinters. They weren't top of the tree or the, the obvious picks for, for, for those slot holders that were open or vacant at the time. And um, the ATC approached us about potentially having a, having a horse there and we suggested a couple of horses and, and they picked Home of the Brave out, um, who at the time had the best form. He'd won brilliantly on a wet track. Um, not about a month before the, the Everest, and he looked like a good proposition, so we accepted. By Tuesday afternoon, he had a temperature and was looking very unlikely that, he, that he'd be running and fortunately we had Osborne Bulls uh, accepted for the, the Sydney Stakes and, and he was the, at the time the favourite for the Sydney Stakes so he was the next choice of the ATC. Now these are the Godolphin colours so this is the barrier that Home of the Brave drew earlier today. It has been replaced by another Godolphin runner. Uh, the ATC hold the slot and they had the choice of 
any one of the six emergencies, they chose Osborne Bulls. So Osborne Bulls goes into the barrier that Home of the Brave drew earlier today. What barrier is that? Barrier five. Tommy Berry rides for James Cummings. This is Osborne Bulls, and he's our chance for the Everest on Saturday. He just loves winning. He doesn't like being beat in a walk. He doesn't like being beat in a trot. He doesn't like being beat in a canter. And he get, takes that right to galloping and he takes that right through to his racing. It's a really great thrill to have a horse like him running in a big race like this. He's, he's just continued to improve as he's gone along and he gives his best. And you know on Saturday, whether he wins or not, he'll be a horse that'll be, he'll be really trying hard for us and it's creating a lot of excitement out here. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Go Aussie! Go Aussie! Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi! Go Aussie! Come on, Aussie! Come, Come on, Aussie. Aussie! Get up, son! Come on, Aussie! Tom, there's been plenty of rain about. The skies have opened up. We've got blue sky here. How is the track? Yeah, it's in great order, actually. I was quite surprised with the amount of rain we have had. Um, They've got a great patch of grass. Um, they've obviously put the rail back into the true, which is nice. There's a good pad of grass on the inside there. So it's it's better than what I expected it to be. And uh, as long as we don't get any rain during the day, which hopefully it doesn't look like we are going to, uh, it should be a nice day for everyone to come out and see. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the bloke I've ended up on. Uh, they've been very bullish during the week about him. He's got a great win record. Uh, the only question marks is class. Uh, he hasn't sort of run in this Group 1 company too many times before, bar last start, so. Well, I was out walking the track and I, I met um, James and Dominic at about the 300 metre mark and we started talking about the track and how it was a bit worn out and we're not sure if Osborne Bulls would, would love a, a surface of, you know, that, that type. And um, James said, what, did you, what would you, you think James and Dominic said, what would you think about going to the outside fence? It was an interesting tactic and it's a tactic that uh, the trainer James Cummings has used before uh, with success. So it didn't surprise me, but let's remember on Osborne Bulls was a late inclusion of the field. He wasn't really one of the fancied runners. So I, I feel he sort of had nothing to lose and threw caution to the wind. And from that day on, he's proven to be one of the country's best horses. There's no doubt about it. His form's been impeccable ever since, and uh, he certainly put the righty on the wall uh, on that day. Geez, he can reel off some fantastic sectionals over with lesser grade horses, but if he can compel that and bring it up to this level, he's definitely right in this. There's nothing wrong with his condition. He's spot on. So Trapeze Artist comes up. And the Lloyd Kennewell train, Vadora. One of the latest inclusions into the race. Vadora comes up and the light's on. Here we go for the Everest. Wow, bigger roar than last year. It's a moist crowd here at Ramwick and the gates open for the Everest. US Navy flag missed the start together with Osborne Bulls. The first thing you, you notice is the crash back of the gates. You, know, you can hear that on the TV and that's what we hear as well. And as soon as you hear that crash back, you know you're off and racing. Relatively speaking, once the gates open, it's important to just ride it like any other race and keep your fingers crossed and hope that you're uh, on the right one. Soft lead for Red Zell. Lure remained a second. Vega Magic three wide. No cover third. Then Trapeze Artist Fedora's off the track. We got a good position on Red Zell. We were travel, travelling comfortable right up on the front. First year we were outside of Hootson. Second year we led. It was an, an instant reaction with Osborne Bulls once I got him out to that better part of the track, he changed legs. I pulled the stick through to my right and he just, he lowered himself down behind and extended. Lura Main sticks on second, Trapeze Artist goes to third, 300 out, Red Zell still cruising in the lead. What are you doing? Trapeze Artist, Lura Main do the chasing, further back to Graf and down the outside is Osborne Bulls, it's Red Zell clear, Red Zell 50 metres to go, looking to conquer the Everest again and boy he's done it. Redzell leads all the way from Trapeze Artist. I think Osborne Bulls that stands well third in front of Lure, Romain and Graf. Hey, Graf. Then Sarah and Elaine from the Everest. Like won it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Osborne Bulls, Tommy Barry. Um, yeah, look, actually, 
jumped well, got on the back of Graf. They took us a fair way in the straight. To be fair, I was a bit worried coming to the corner because the wheels were spinning. Yeah. So once we got out of that pad of grass, pulled the stick through the right, and gave him one, he, he let rip, you know. He saw his, his run ended at about the 50 metre mark, yeah. but he's just all guts. That was unreal. I feel like I won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the is, you got over the top of like the remain the last. Mate, run. like he just, yeah. like he everything's, just everything's yeah. run was ending the last hundred. Well, I think they got on that tiring track. Yeah. They probably got bogged down in it. Where we we're just out there cruising along, you know. Yeah. yeah. So well done. Yeah. Good on you. Well done. 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 Yeah, well, yeah. that was probably the best third we've ever run in our lives. I've never seen so heavy. <laughs> the question is, who will it be? Who will it be? Will we get the answers here tonight from James Cummings and Darren Beeman? I doubt it. Did you think you'd see them stronger over the line than the other horse? Any one of those horses is, is well and truly on our radar. Um, and I'd be surprised if they're not on other people's too, but it's their slot and it's for them to sort out. You did a good job with him, you switched well, him back off. Well, I was able to just get him to control. You got him to wait till passing the I got him to wait till I was ready to go. Yeah. It's perfect. That's what, that's what we need. That's what we need.